Man, this Ash of War is so cool. Same with these. Uh, these? Oh, uh, did I mention that I have eight Ashes of War right now? Wait a second, are you Darth Maul? Uh, ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, it's that special time again to have another look at mods in Elden Ring. And as mods tend to do the longer that the game is out, the more complex the mods are getting, the more ridiculous they are getting, and modders are simply learning better exactly how they can mess with the game's files to create entirely new experiences within Elden Ring. Whether you are someone who plays the game on PC and is looking for some guidance as to which mods you may want to try, or you are someone who plays on console who just wants to see and explore the possibilities of modding in Elden Ring, this is the place for you, as today I have another five cool mods to share. So without further ado, first up today is going to be eight weapon arts in one, Awakened Malaketh's Black Blade by Corvus. This one is quite special, not just because of the way that it feels in the game, which I will get to momentarily, but just the general concept of adjusting the weapon skill system as a whole to allow each directional input to activate a totally different ability. It totally reshapes how you would think of the combat in Elden Ring. Obviously, it trivializes regular weapon attacks, but this isn't meant to be balanced, it is meant to be fun, and having messed around with it for a while, I can say this thing is so much fun. On top of using directional inputs to change which skill activates when you press the Ash of War button, the eight Ashes of War are split into two categories, one of which activates if you have over 200 FP, and the other activates if you have less than 200 FP, as well as filling your FP bar back to full. This creates a really cool cyclical loop of combat, where you use one of the expensive skills, then one of the cheap skills, then one of the expensive skills and one cheap skill, and never running out of FP or having to swap to anything else. And the fact that each of those gets four skills each makes for an incredibly varied moveset. Every one of these has also been infused with Destined Death as an effect, as well as having a lot of their base parameters mess with to add things like iframes or movement. And using any weapon skill with this weapon infuses the blade itself with Destined Death, making it fire the Black Knife projectile anytime you do a charge attack or a sprint attack of either kind. And on top of that, your backstep attack has been significantly changed as well. Really, this is just a total overhaul of Malakas Black Blade in an incredibly cool and deep way that could justify an entire playthrough just messing around with this. Again, it isn't really balanced. Once you learn how to use the inputs right, you'll destroy anything that you touch. But not everything is about balance. Some things are about fun. And this thing is just so goddamn fun. Secondly, then, we have the Ancient Dragon Lanciax costume mod by Apollo Who. I am the Dragon Warrior. This straight up changes the Draconic Tree Sentinel armor into a full on retexture of your character into Ancient Dragon Lanciax, which I can just imagine Madfinger Vike over in the corner salivating at the thought, so make sure you stay clear of him while wearing this, alright? Honestly, I have seen a lot of armor changing mods for this game, and to be honest with you, 95% of them just show off your bazongas, and nude mods aren't unusual, but I feel like Elden Ring, percentage wise, has a lot of nude mods compared to many other games. But while I definitely won't be showing those, on YouTube, in a weird way they are very important for contributing to the growth of armor and character mods, pun not intended, as these are the people that tend to work out how to restructure our armor and even reshape our bodies, and that is just the stepping stone that leads to a full on body swap with the dragon. And how damn cool is this dragon skin? So whether you like the Bumba Wumba nude mods or not, it is hard to deny the results that they've given us when it comes to other texture and model affecting mods to follow. Third up today is an extreme extremely substantial mod. Like if I wanted to, I could be here for a good hour just talking about this one, Call of the Abyss by Coda Studios. This is a massive compilation of mods created by one modding group, and they have been really damn busy, as you can imagine, from the first 10 seconds of footage on the screen. This thing has everything from lightsabers to alternate game modes that do things like drain your health by 3% every single second, just constantly forever through your entire playthrough. More than 15 new weapons, a bunch of armor sets, including references to Naruto, and of course to Berserk. Six incantations including Fire Flame, Ghost Flame, Amaterasu, Fire Style Dragon Flame Jutsu, Gate of Babylon, and Black Flame Wisp. Uh, new items that you can buy and use such as Shurikens, Kunai, and an improved version of the Ancestral Infant's Head. They're even planning to add goddamn gun katars so you can shoot bullets from your fist weapons, and just as a base across the entire game, every weapon gains a deflect mechanic, sort of like Sekiro, allowing you to completely negate an enemy's hit and get a good counterattack 
in without needing a shield or parrying dagger to achieve the same effect. This mod adds a million things to the game, even the ability to explode every 25 seconds if you want to, to use guts as a spirit summon, and even to respawn dead main bosses so you can have another go at the ones you particularly enjoy without having to get there again in New Game Plus, and it is still actively updating, adding even more as it goes. The size of the files for this mod are over 4 gigabytes as it currently stands, which, if you don't know, is extremely, extremely large for a mod. If you were to download one mod for Elden Ring, only one, and never try a different one, this is probably it right here. There's just so much to keep you interested for a ridiculously long time, and it just keeps growing. Fourthly, then, is more mounts by Locky Pocky, and this one is really cool mechanically speaking, as it doesn't replace Torrent with a skin like many of the horse mods do. This one actually completely restructures a piece of the game to allow you to just mount wild horses, or more specifically, enemy horses once they are knocked off of them. Not even just horses either, even things like dire wolves or ants if you feel so inclined. However, you can't jump on an ant as the ants don't have jumping in their coating, which is honestly fair enough. Again, this is not a mod that changes the skin of Torrent, so the mounts don't function like Torrent. They function how they function, and you just get the ability to ride on top of them, which is honestly just so freaking cool. It may not be the most effective thing in the world. Using them for mounted combat is just less effective than using your own actual horse, as they sort of bug out if you try to attack on them. But as far as fun factor goes, there are a few things more weirdly satisfying than just hopping on an ant instead of killing it, making friends instead of stabbing, maybe even actually listening to its problems. I think everything must go back to the fact that I had a very anxious childhood. You know, my, my mother never had time for me. You know, when, when, you, when you're the middle child in a family of five million, you don't get any attention. I mean, how is it possible? Fifth, and finally then, is one final weapon mod, but quite a good one. Unsheathe, Unsheathed by KN Sora. And this one simply changes the Unsheathe weapon skill to have a couple of different effects rather than just being a couple of different types of slashes. And as a result, creates an entirely new weapon skill. Now the light attack exit of the sheath turns you invulnerable for a moment like Bloodhound Step, then unleashes two pops of the waterfowl dance effect from Melania's Blade. If you dodge through an attack with the startup, this does a little bit more damage. And the heavy attack version of the unsheathed attack is also extremely cool, as it basically wants you to trade hits with whatever you are fighting. The attack itself is like Vacuum Slice from the Gargoyle Greatsword, but with a massive wind-up time after pressing the button. If an enemy attack hits you right after you press the button to do the wind-up, you will take full damage, which is of course quite dangerous. But then, once the Vacuum Slice goes off, it will hit for nearly double the damage than it would have if you didn't get hit in the wind-up. As a result, this playstyle is surprisingly actually balanced for something that is capable of hitting that hard, as in order to actually hit that hard, you have to trade away your own HP. This is a great example of making something very new and unique, extremely fun, but not quite breaking the game at the same time. On top of this, both attacks have an effect where if you don't roll out of it and just stand your ground, the effect will happen a second time, half a second later. Either a second pop of waterfowl effect or a second vacuum slice. In either case, it does a load of damage if you commit to your attack, which I think is really cool. All in all, modding in Elden Ring is getting to progressively more and more interesting places by the day. And even if you can't or don't want to use the mod yourself, personally I feel like it is really cool to see what's going on, what modders are capable of, and what the game itself can be turned into in the right hands. And that is why I'm sharing this with all of you. I hope you enjoyed it, like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye